Hey, YouTube Picklers. Today we're getting into another deep dive video. I want to thank Rich Keenan from Chasing Dill for allowing us to use this video. And I also want to thank the players for putting it out there on the court and allowing the rest of us to watch uh, their play so that we can learn uh, how to improve our games. As the title suggests, this is a deep dive video. This is not for the faint of heart. We're going to go through some in-depth concepts here, uh, particularly moving like a team, some court positioning, some shot selection, and things like that. If you're looking for a quick tip type of video or just aren't into deep dives, stop the video here and go watch something else might be my advice. But if you're into really understanding pickleball concepts at a deep level, then let's go down the rabbit hole. Before diving in, let me introduce the players that I'll be referring to during the video. On the top, you'll see John in the white shirt, Sylvia in a green shirt. And on the bottom, you'll see Chuck in a black shirt and Camille in a white shirt. Fortunately for us as students of the game, this uh, match has a lot of moving as a team, which is important, an important concept, particularly obviously in doubles. So we're going to get to see several different shot sequences where the movement as a team and not as a team, and we want to talk about it. So that's what we're going to focus on now is moving as a team. A common error in doubles pickleball is players or teams not moving together. What you're going to see here is when Sylvia hits the third shot, John looks over at her to see what kind of shot she's hitting before he moves forward. Then they come up together, they start moving up together. There is a but here. Sylvia hits a nice third shot. Camille's hitting under the net. I'd like to see John move a little further forward or a little uh, sell out on a poach here because that's an attackable ball at that point, and he would have been able to hit it down more. But they're still moving together. You'll see John and Sylvia are basically on a line back there. Sylvia now looking over to John to see what's happening with his shot. Uh, she moves in a little bit here, but not too far. And now they basically move together left to right up at the uh, no volley zone. You're going to see uh, they're moving with the dinks. Camille shifting over. Sylvia and John are shifting over. And then uh, Chuck's going to try and around the post that goes wide. A side note I want you to notice in this next one is a consistent serve preparation of Sylvia. You'll notice this on several of the points. The players have consistent serve preparation to avoid errors on the serve. Here you see that Camille shifted over to the middle, which is a good place for her to be here to assert the middle or control the middle. You see John and Sylvia moving together here. Sylvia's looking over at John to see what kind of shot he's going to hit. Chuck and Camille have made it up to the no volley zone, which is a, where they need to be. John and Sylvia are still moving together. They're moving as a team. I would suggest here again that John should probably continue moving forward a little more here because of where he has Chuck. And Chuck's four shot probably should have been deeper, basically invited John up to the net here. Here you're going to see a nice defensive sequence. Uh, Camille's dug that ball. She's popped it up. Now watch what she does. She takes a couple of steps back here to basically reestablish herself and be able to defend. Then she's getting a nice third shot here again, or a nice uh, a reset shot. And then she moves forward to retake the line. Sylvia's shot here is stressed Chuck, and Chuck has uh, basically laid it back towards John. John steps in nicely to hit an aggressive shot here. I think he could have hit an aggro dink towards the middle or cross court. Uh, he ends up opting to kind of stroke it down the middle a little bit. The risk with that shot is, uh, as you can see, Chuck can reach that ball and hit it. Chuck ends up missing the shot, but it's not a position you want to put yourself in. Here I want you to look again at Chuck's serve preparation. It's always consistent every time he serves. Here he looks over at Camille to see what kind of third shot she's going to hit, which is the right thing for him to do. Chuck's an aggressive player, so he's trying to get up to the net or the Nobali zone line. I think he should have stayed back there because Sylvia could have attacked his feet there. And you never want to expose your feet to attack. Camille does a nice job of digging this up and sending it into the kitchen. Sylvia steps backwards. When she steps backwards, you can see that Camille and Chuck rush forward, uh, resulting in them being able to put pressure on Sylvia and John and finish the point. Again, look at the serve preparation before the serve is executed. You're going to see here a ball that comes up the middle. John should poach this ball. Uh, see how high it is. Sylvia's still moving. It's a harder shot for her to handle. Uh, Chuck and Camille can close on this ball now and put pressure on uh, John and Sylvia here. Chuck's attack hits the net, giving them a reprieve. Sylvia should really be up at the no volley zone line here rather than leaning back a little bit here or off the line. And then here, it resets better than drive from here. It's really hard to win from these uh, points here, uh, from this position. John and Sylvia are both playing off the line right now. Very difficult to win a point off the line like this. In this next point, you'll see the difference that it makes when John poaches the same sort of ball up the middle. He poaches it now, and he can put it away to win the point. In this next point, Chuck and Camille are stacked on serve, which is fine. The only uh, suggestion I would make is Camille is way over to the left there. She should probably be further over to the right rather than having to run that far over. Sylvia does a good job of covering the middle here. Uh, she, you can see she's locked down in the middle there. Here, Sylvia needs to retake the line. Sylvia is pushed off the line here, and you'll see that she basically doesn't retake the line in this position here. Camille makes a nice adjustment here. Chuck, again, is an aggressive player. He's trying to move around. Camille gets over to cover John's put away there. 
And Sylvia, I like Sylvia's move. I like her being aggressive, taking that ball in the middle there and moving up to it to hit a shot. Just give herself a little more margin on the shot next time. At this point, I want you to notice a difference in positioning. So, and this time, rather than looking back at Sylvia's hitting the third shot, John's actually moving while Sylvia's hitting it. John's in a dangerous spot here because if, if Chuck can get a hold of this any higher, he's going to hit John in the feet here. Here, John and Sylvia regroup in no man's land, but they never quite close here. They kind of stay off the line a little too far. And then uh, it makes it a far harder shot uh, for John to execute. This next point, you're going to see Sylvia cheat in a little bit after John serves. So what happens is Chuck hits a deep return, pushing Sylvia off the line, making it much harder for her to hit a good third shot from this position, rather than having stayed off the line and then being able to come into the third shot. Here you can see John and Sylvia are out of sync. John's up, Sylvia's back, so they're really not in the sync right now. Sylvia's trying to work her way up there. Uh, but John is susceptible to attack right here. He's susceptible to attack because he's kind of isolated up on the, in the no volley zone by himself there. And then you're going to see, now they're going to regroup well in defense. So now they're moving back in a defensive position. You can see they're in a line. It's a really good motion right now. Uh, they're moving back in sync. They're able to defend. Sylvia's going to lay off this ball here because John's got a better angle at it uh, and can put it back in play. And then you're going to see uh, it's a really good use of uh, defensive play at this point uh, just to try and get back in this point. Now they're out of sync again. Sylvia's moving up. John's back. Uh, so they've broken their sync position again. Now they're back in sync up at the no volley zone line. Sylvia's going to start applying some pressure here in a second. And now you're going to see uh, Chuck and Camille are going to basically be pushed off the line now. Uh, so they're going to form a defensive front going backwards defensively. Here there's a tactical error that's made, which is this shot here should be taken in the air. Instead, it's bounced, and so what happens is Chuck and Camille come rushing forward again and take their position at the Novali zone line, and then Camille avoids uh, Sylvie's attack shot. Lastly, you can saw on uh, moving like a team. I'm going to show you here. Look how Camille moves forward uh, and is subject to attack, and then Sylvie does a nice job of attacking the middle to win the point. Moving like a team is critical for successful doubles play. You want to get up to the no volley zone line, but you cannot sacrifice moving like a team in order to get up there. You've got to move up like a team, move back like a team, left like a team, or right like a team. Always moving like a team in doubles play pickleball if you want to be successful. Switch gear from uh, moving on the court to shot selection. We'll focus on third shots first. Here you're going to see how Sylvia shifts to the middle, which is the right thing for her to do here. She's covering the middle. Camille's going to attack the moving player, who's John in this case. You always want to attack the moving player when in doubt. And then here you're going to see uh, Sylvia move back and give up the line. You want to avoid giving up the line as much as possible. Next point, you're going to see a nice deep serve here by Chuck. Pushes Sylvia off the line here. And then what that allows is then it creates an opportunity for Chuck to catch Sylvia while she's still moving. It's not a black and white situation here, but that type of ball is a ball that might be poachable by John if he basically came across and sold out on a poach there. Here you're going to see uh, the option of using a lob as a third shot. Sylvia has a particularly good lob, and here she's using a lob as a third shot, pushing Chuck off the line. John and Sylvia should be rushing forward right now to take advantage of having pushed Chuck off the line. You're going to see here they get an attackable ball. See how high it is at this point? But because they're not up at the line, they can't capitalize on Sylvia's great lob to start the point. Here you're going to see another deep serve by Camille, and then she's going to attack the open area here. She's attacking the moving player because John's still moving forward here. And then you're going to see uh, a nice uh, exchange here of dinking, and you're going to see Sylvia hit a lob here to get out of a tough spot. It doesn't work out, but I actually like the lob here. It just happens to be a little short, but it's a nice shot from that position to get out of a tough situation. Unless you have a specific reason not to do this, Hit your third shots towards the returner as the returner will be moving towards the no volley zone line and will have a harder time with it. When you're on the return team up at the no volley zone line, keep a lookout for poach opportunities from third shots that may go high. Let's look at how the returner serve can set the tone for a point here. In the first point, we're going to see a deep return from Camille. It is going to push Sylvia off of the line. And then Sylvia's trying to hit a third shot off of the back foot, which is very difficult to do because the weight transfer isn't correct and it goes into the net. Here you're going to see a, another deep return, this time from Sylvia to Camille. And what happens is keeps Camille off the line so that Sylvia can attack the open space. Here you're going to see a short return by Chuck. It allows John to move forward and to hit an aggressive shot, a really nice aggressive third shot towards Chuck's feet, winning the point. Here you're going to see a short return by Sylvia. That allows Camille, who has a nice forehand, to come forward. Her and Chuck both come charging forward and take the no volleys online. Here you're going to see a deep return by John. 
It pushes Camille off the line. Chuck moves in here. Uh, it's better for him to stay back and defend here, but he moves in, exposing himself to attack. See if he can put the ball away and win the point. This next point combines deep return with court positioning. You're going to see Sylvia's consistent serve preparation here. So you're going to see Sylvia moves into the baseline. Chuck's going to hit a nice deep return here, pushing Sylvia off of the line. So now Sylvia has to back up well beyond the baseline in order to hit this ball. John's in sync here waiting for Sylvia's shot, but Sylvia has to hit a shot off her back foot, which is a very difficult shot, ends up going out wide. The return can set the tone for the whole point. Try and hit your returns deep so that you put pressure on the serving team. If you hit them short, you'll probably be under pressure yourself. Next, let's look at different shots from different positions uh, in different situations. Here you're going to see the, that Chuck can actually step into this, inside the baseline to drive a third, so he chooses to do that. Here he breaks the X. There's an X on the court. I'll link to that video below. But he breaks the X with a purpose, which is to drive the shot here on John. Here John has an aggro dink opportunity. I think he probably could have hit a little more of an aggressive dink in that position here. And here he probably should wait for a better spot than off the backhand and the back foot. Even though it seems repetitive, I want to point out again the consistent serve preparation. This is an important component of becoming a successful pickleball player. Sylvie is up at the no volley zone line in a good position here. Uh, you're going to see how she's going to basically come over to the middle here to cover the middle third, which is a great uh, spot for her to be in. She's trying to look to keep the servers back. That's a great idea by her to keep the servers back. Again, Chuck breaks the X here, but with a purpose, even though he misses, he still has a purpose in what he's trying to accomplish here. At this point, you're going to see how Chuck and Camille use the deeper turn and then a, a cover the middle shot by Chuck where he moves over here to cover the middle not allowing John time to move forward. All he does is roll it back there to keep John back. It's not a hard shot, it's just a shot to keep him back here. Sylvia's moving forward while John's pinned back. So what ends up happening is Sylvia ends up isolated up at the front and then Chuck finally attacks the feet to put the point away. An important concept is whenever you can attack the feet, do so. Pointing out consistent serve preparation here by Sylvia and here Chuck, nice deep return and Camille and Chuck are gonna try and keep Sylvia and John back on the line as much as possible. They finally make it forward. Here's a question. Should he aggro dink or drive here? Should have aggro dinked, chose to drive. John's got two good hands in the middle and puts that ball away. At this point, we'll see the concept of attacking the closer player. Here, Sylvia is going to attack the moving player, which is Camille. Chuck does a good job of moving across to poach or stop that attack from being successful. Chuck here should have attacked John here, not Sylvia, because Sylvia was further back. Now you'll see some nice dink in here back and forth. And then Sylvia's going to attack. Chuck and Camille are in deep trouble here. While Camille is successfully defending the ball, John's moving forward for the kill. John gets a couple of kill shots here. I think John here should have attacked Chuck because Chuck is closer to him. He ends up winning the point anyway, but I think an attack on Chuck would have been optimal. Here you're going to see Chuck step across the line and hit the shot. It looks like he might be breaking the X here, but he's not because that ball is actually traveling towards him. So it's actually his ball to hit there. Here you're going to see that he overcommits. Sylvia has a nice opportunity to go behind him to the open court. Fortunately, her shot is a little bit high, and Chuck's able to counterattack it into John. At this point, we're going to see some good uh, strategy of keeping the player back. Repeatedly, you're going to see Sylvia do it first. Camille's going to hit a third shot to her after the nice deep return by John. Then John keeps her back here as well. I don't like where Chuck is here. Chuck's putting himself in a tough spot. If John get a hold of that ball... He's going to be able to attack Chuck. A lot of times what you see in these situations where you keep the team back is that the team that's back will make an error eventually. Two things you should always be looking for in a pickleball point is to keep the serving team back as much as possible and to apply pressure on your opponents with every shot. Because Chuck and Camille stack, we have the opportunity to discuss some stacking concepts in this video, so let's go ahead and do that. Here, Chuck and Camille are starting on a stacked position on the return of serve. You're going to see some good play here by both teams. So you're going to see a Camille return down the line, which is a good return because that way John cannot attack her down the line shot here. Sylvie does a really nice job of going across court third to the moving player. Here what happens is Camille goes for the shot here, but she's off balance and reaching and hits it into the net because her shoulder drops while she's hitting it. This next point looks almost like a repeat of the last point, but you'll see the difference at the end here. Chuck and Camille start in a stacked position on return of serve. Camille's going to return her serve down the line. Sylvie's going to go cross court again with the third shot. This time Camille gets over there in time and can put the ball away. You're going to think this is a replay of the last two points, but it's not. It's another stacked starting position on a return. Down the line return by Camille. I like the change of strategy here by 
Sylvia, Camille just put a nice ball away uh, with a smash. So she goes for a lob, which again is a good shot by her. Uh, this is not an easy read here because Chuck has a possibility of playing this ball. It's where they should have moved in or not. I prefer a roll attack here by Chuck. Instead, he opts for a lob, which he actually executes very well. Uh, but a roll attack would have been easier. And then John resets it. Camille hits her shot down the X here or down the middle of the, of the court here. And what happens here is it's really Sylvia's ball because it's coming in her body, but an easier shot. John, I think he's just in the moment. He's playing the point, but he ends up reaching across his body, which is a harder shot to hit, and the ball ends up going into the net. If you're going to stack on return to serve, do not give the serving team the chance to attack on open court by returning the ball across court. I want to take a minute and recognize an important part of the game that's often not discussed, which is the paddle tap. To give you some context, at this point in the game, uh, this is an extremely stressful match. It's a finals. They've been playing all day. It's just a, a long day of playing pickleball. Chuck and Camille have come out of the loser's bracket uh, and are now challenging for the gold. John and Sylvia played a long day of pickleball here. It's a very stressful moment. So for John uh, to tap paddle or to take a moment and tap paddle with Sylvia is very important. It's a, just a, a, a concept that really needs to be worked on by teams that play together. Next time you're playing, don't forget to paddle tap with your partner.